TikToker once commented on one of my videos saying, just because the camera isn't in focus, that doesn't mean it's bad cinematography. So uh, take that for what you will. Time to insult a bunch of children. Today we'll be talking about TikTok and the damage it has wrought upon society. TikTok is a disgusting and vile place where nuance goes to die. Now, this isn't a characteristic that is exclusive to only this app. Other things possess it, like Twitter. But seeing as though TikTok is one of perhaps the biggest social media platform in the world right now, it seems like a good example to use for this kind of critique. And from where I'm sitting, it is the key perpetrator it is bringing back and consolidating all of the worst aspects of the internet. So I first got TikTok to help promote this channel, a big fucking mistake there. What I soon discovered was that on this app, only the most primal and surface level mentalities were on display. It reduces every single topic and issue to this rigid red versus blue battle, a lot like Twitter or X now. It's the most sensational versions of everything. Take this culture war between men and women right now. TikTok would have you believe that the world is entirely made up of women hating incels and men hating feminazis and there's no middle ground. It skews reality, it makes everything seem all the more cynical and it honestly depresses the user. And where this comes into my jurisdiction is obviously this surface level mentality bleeds over into TikTok's film discourse. Before I go into this I would advise that if you are a film fan, if you're a fan of art and broad grey expression do not go on TikTok ever. It is brain rot, it is cancer to critical thinking. But that being said, in this video, I'm going to list a few examples of all the ways that TikTok pisses me off. One initial thing I've noticed is that all of the most popular and trending film takes, film opinions on the app are made up of mostly really obvious and obnoxious examples of storytelling. As in aspects of films that don't require any skill to notice or point out, things that are just unoriginal observations. For instance, one example, poor CGI is always clowned on because it's a very easy fault to spot. Not to sound snobby, but it's something that everyone can see because it's so out in the open. The problem with this is that the criticism doesn't really go much deeper than that, seeing as though CGI is a fairly surface level component to a movie, having bad CGI doesn't necessarily tell you a whole lot about the overall quality of the film. To get a more in-depth look at the movie, we have to start looking at all of the other aspects, like the writing, the themes, the directing, the acting. And obviously TikTok is all 30 second videos, so this is hardly ever done. There's no thoughtful analysis that like really goes in depth on a film. Ultimately, what it all comes down to is whether or not the CGI looks cringe. It's either, oh yeah, that looks sick, or oh my god, that's so bad, oh skull emoji, cringe. Another example of this, and perhaps my favourite example, is the adulation of shouty acting. So for the final father fucking time! Now there are thousands of these edits on TikTok where it's like the greatest acting performances of all time. All of which are predominantly made up of a bunch of people shouting their heads off. Now these aren't bad performances by any means, but the only reason these particular instances of acting have caught the attention of the TikTok users is because they are some of the most overtly emotional, balls to the wall, borderline Oscar bait acting moments. They only notice good acting when it's quite literally screaming in their face. It's unmistakable. I showed up! I was getting it for you! You understand? I'm in the dark! Bones of God! Stay in English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? I am nothing! It does not take any intelligent or analytical thought to spot the good acting in these moments. Perhaps the best way to phrase this is that people aren't noticing the good acting, they're just noticing the shouting. And where this goes wrong is you start to have praise for bad acting, but it seems good just because the person's shouting, because shouting equals good acting. <laughs> What you have to remember is that yelling and screaming is a common crutch used by bad actors to try and force profundity into a scene. And with that, you end up with some really hilarious clips like this. And look, I'm not saying that Daniel Day-Lewis in There Will Be Blood or Hugh Jackman in Prisoners are bad performances. I think they're great performances, but it's not just because they have those occasional moments of screaming go, WHERE'S MY FUCKING DAUGHTER? WHERE'S MY DAUGHTER? WHERE'S MY 
Hey! And also these stupid fucking montages always have that same musical piece playing in the background. Playing basketball in Pelican Bay! Get out of the for me! Stop! No! Stop! Stop! I am the third revelation! I am the third revelation! So what data have we got so far about how TikTok judges whether a film is good or not? So there's bad CGI equals bad movie. So terrible CGI, terrible movie, just outright awful. Not worthy of anyone's time if there's a little bit of bad CGI here and there. And people shouting equals excellent acting. Now, what else is there? A film or show might have one cheesy line of dialogue and then the whole thing just gets written off. Or there's one particular moment that's a bit cringy and everyone rips on it. Which, to be fair, is something that I do too. I really enjoy taking clips of bad acting or awful dialogue to like illustrate a point I'm making. Stomp you, I'll fucking curb stomp you. I'm sorry. I'll fucking curb stomp you. But I like to think that my reviews go a little bit more further than just nitpicking one particular scene. Again, with the rigidness, it's all black and white. A film is either goated or mid as fuck. Film opinions are divided into two camps, dubs and L's, and there's no in between. Goated! 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 You know you've expressed a popular film opinion if you get a bunch of comments on your TikTok saying W take. That's like the fucking holy grail. However, if you express an opinion that isn't so popular and one that a lot of people will disagree with, you get L take and you get labelled as like, oh, you're an L, oh, you're mid as fuck, oh, your opinions are mid as fuck. And it's like, oh, you're over, you're blacklisted, essentially. What I'm describing here is a horribly devolved version of online discourse. And I thought we were past this, honestly. I thought we didn't label people we disagree with as nitpicking or biased. I thought we were open to differing opinions and different types of film experiences. But the more and more I interact with the film discourse, the more and more I feel like we've regressed. I've been accused of all sorts, being an incel, woman hater, being nitpicking, being biased, being someone who just went in wanting to hate the movie, being someone who missed the point of the movie. All of these trite talking points and labels, and I'm just there like, oh, so much for hearing someone else out. Whilst I was in my late teens, I was watching YMS, I Hate Everything, and Ralph the Movie Maker, Red Letter Media as well, and they always gave me the impression that the online film discourse was a fairly reasonable place, but no, holy shit. I didn't engage with the rest of the internet and all of that shit, I just mainly listened to them, and for that, I kind of got a bit of a skewed perception of what it was like. I thought things were much more idyllic and mature than it turned out to be, and yeah, uh, it was very depressing to learn that. And I also noticed these degenerate trends creeping back into reality, like the onslaught of reaction videos and just mindless hype culture over whatever Marvel or DC movie is coming out. Regardless of that, we need to get down to the nitty gritty of why this is happening. The reason for this vain attitude towards discussing complex topics is because TikTok is a domain that's primarily inhabited by 13 year olds. Now when you're 12, 13, 14, whatever, you're essentially a massive idiot and you have no critical capacity. You're easy to emotionally manipulate and when you're easy to emotionally manipulate, you are susceptible to being wowed by storytelling that possesses no authenticity at all. You're naive and easy to fool, and hence you fall for the most egregious heartstring pulling tactics known to man. Your brain literally isn't fully developed, so it's not even your fault, but you're just a big fucking idiot. A storyteller does not have to be skilled or gifted to successfully garner an emotional response from you at that age. Remember all of the dumb shit you used to find profound at that age, both girls and boys, boys with the fucking Joker, edgelord, oh, society's abandoned me and it's only because he's fucking had his first heartbreak and he's like, oh, world's against me and I'm a fucking, I'm an incel now. The boys with those fucking Reddit posts about being a lone wolf and then you had the girls who loved those she believed, he lied and they were like, oh my god. That's just my two cents on that generation and I think it's really fucking stupid and everything they like is dumb, damn kids. <laughs> Now this all leads back to Zack Snyder. All of this shallow criteria for what makes a good film according to these TikTokers leads to Zack Snyder having a newfound fan base on TikTok. 
I got so much shit for criticising the Snyder Cut on there. Like, Zack Snyder film is bad, water is wet, you'd think. But apparently no, apparently it's sacrilegious to go against the mighty Snyder. When I first started experiencing these people, I immediately likened them to a cult, and turns out that the Snyder Cult is a name that is used for them. And I'm proud that I came to that conclusion on my own. Because they do behave like a fucking cult. I'm feeling nothing but vindication here, because of course the idiotic brain rot TikTokers with awful films film taste. Of course they like Zack Snyder films. His style is pretentious and vapid, it's all just cool looking imagery with no heart or properly developed characters. No depth to anything, where have we heard that before? He's a phony art all with a lacklustre style, but I do find it fairly interesting to look at his trademarks and analyse why it resonates with TikTokers so much. For one, a lot of his films contain this like fetishization of masculinity with all of these muscles and greasy oil men. It's all about, yeah, masculinity, and yeah, oh, yeah, oh, I'm so fucking buff, and do, you re do I really need to explain why that resonates with people on TikTok? All I'm going to say on that front is Andrew Tate. Fucking Zack Snyder is to films what Andrew Tate is to, like, the masculinity discourse. All of his films have these big epic fights that we've no investment in. It's all just massive, empty shit. Storytelling that is insisting upon itself without trying to earn any of the emotions or beats that it's going for. And his films take themselves extremely seriously, and it's just like the adolescent boy who's dressing all edgy to look cool and he thinks he's fucking amazing he's like oh my god look how fucking awesome I look when really he looks like a fucking idiot filmmaking and storytelling is almost like another form of interaction and communication the film is supposed to be the director's voice through which they are trying to communicate to you the audience certain ideas when I'm watching a Zack Snyder film I feel like I'm talking to a vain 14 year old jock from high school it's all just ah oh, muscles and epic fights Zack Snyder Snyder strikes me as a vapid and manipulative person, at least when it comes to how he makes his movies. And a lot of the time, that is unfortunately all it takes for a fucking idiotic 15 year old. But aside from that, in a lot of ways, I'm actually quite glad that the Snyder Cult is back in full force because they serve for a fairly good antagonistic force for us film bros to repel. They're one of the big bad in the ever going battle for nuanced thinking. They're an Avengers level threat. And remember to fucking subscribe. I'm going to wrap this all up now, but one lesson that I've learned from all of this is that these platforms like TikTok or Twitter, X, only present the rash opinions of the loud minorities, and they aren't indicative of the true state of culture, which I do think is far more balanced than some might believe. Most people over the age of 15 aren't so narrow-minded, that's what I think. Most women are completely fine with you not liking Barbie, it really isn't a big deal. Men and women aren't these two warring factions that social media would have you believe. I myself am very susceptible to outside influence if I get all of this bullshit coming in, I'll start to believe it. And it is times like these where you have all of these outside forces coming to attack your opinions on films that prove to be good tests on your conviction in staying true to what you believe. Honestly, I feel like I've done a little bit of a disservice to myself even fucking talking about these degenerates. Me, you, we are all above this. We don't have to worry about any of this shit. <laughs> Hop, 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 hop,